Hello there and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to my sewing room for an incredibly simple project today. Now you've seen me make regular pencil skirts and various different styles of skirt here on the channel before, but what you haven't seen me do is work with spandex knit stretch fabrics because it's something I very rarely do and really only have been using these sort of fabrics for their like metallic finishes, not for their stretch properties. Um, it's not something I usually like back them with a woven fabric so they don't stretch on me. So really I very rarely use fancy stretch spandex for what they are actually capable of. So even though there are about a billion tutorials for how to make stretch pencil skirts here on the internet, I thought I would go ahead and just throw my two cents in as well and show you how I've been making these weird spandex stretch skirts recently here in my studio. All right, here we are above the blue patterning table of doom. And here's the pattern that I have been using that I will again just reference today. Um, but I will show you how I made this pattern. It's very simple. Basically, you're going to be drawing the shape of a pencil skirt and then making it a little bit smaller than you need it. So you're going to need your waist and your hip measurement for this and then how long you want the skirt to be. And then I would subtract about two inches from each of those measurements, not the length, uh, obviously the length you keep as is, but you know, your waist and your hip here, you're going to want to subtract around two inches from that. Um, if your fabric is incredibly stretchy, you can go ahead and subtract maybe three or four inches, but I would say on average, unless your fabric is incredibly stretchy um, and soft, or I would go with your measurements minus two inches. So things don't have to stretch too much, like patterns won't get misshapen or anything like that. Um, since you're making it custom, you might as well make it just snug enough. So my waist is around 30 inches and my hip is around 42. That's, you know, give or take a couple of inches, depending on, I don't know, time of the panini, but around that basically, and especially in a stretch fabric, it doesn't matter. Um, so I'm gonna subtract two from each of that and we will start drawing this half a pencil skirt. So this will be my center front and my center back. The front and back of this pattern are the same because again, stretchy, you know? Uh, the direction of stretch is gonna go across the body like this. So just something to keep in mind. And here at the top of the waist, I need a quarter of whatever waist measurement I'm using. So for me, I'm going to be making this with a 28 inch waist. So I'm going to make a, this about a quarter of that. And then I'll add in a half inch for seam allowance. That's right. So then I need to find out the distance between my waist and like my full hip, like the fullest part of my hip measurement, like your bum plus your hips, uh, whatever the fullest part of that is. However far down that is from your waist is something good to know for this. Again, being super precise with this won't matter too much because luckily again, everything stretches but um, just take a measuring tape and kind of hold it to your waist and then hold it down to where your hip um, is at its fullest. And that will give you a good guideline on where to draw this next line for the hip, which for me is around seven inches down for my waist. And so I'll go ahead and mark a quarter of my hip measurement down here, seven inches down. So you can see I'm doing quite well lining up with my original pattern here. And then I'm going to come down about uh, 10 inches really is a good, that's about like top of the, knee-ish, uh, you know, just like the mid zone. So I used uh, here 11 inches, yeah, um, for the middle of my pattern here. This is a bit trial and error. I mean, this first one I made, kind of made up, you know, <laughs> and then I it, I saw if it worked and it did. Um, so now I'm just drawing in the full length of this and I did taper that down about two inches. Um, you can take a measuring tape and measure around your knees up here. <laughs> so like here, I'm drawing a little person. Measure around your knees right here. So those are kind of the three measurements I guess you need. And the fourth measurement being the length. You need your waist, hip, and then the distance around your knees. Um, again, if your fabric isn't very stretchy, you're gonna wanna make this like maybe exactly your size. Um, but like I would recommend a two-way, a hefty two-way stretch or a four-way stretch for something like this. And so I do have this tapered down at the hem to maybe an inch and a half, two inches more than the distance around my knees with my legs standing close-ish together. Um, this is not, this skirt doesn't have a slit or anything like that. I wouldn't be able to like run without hiking it up, but I don't ever need to run anyway, luckily. So I kind of avoid that. I did add on an extra about inch of seam allowance to the top of the waist here, just because it gets folded over twice for the elastic waistband on this. But otherwise I will go ahead and cut this out and we can start working with this. The other consideration um, also being at the hem to give yourself at least like an inch straight um, from where it tapers down, just so that you have a way to um, turn that up to hem it without it being an angle and interacting with anything weirdly. And in fact, my skirt had come out a little bit long, so I'm going to cut an inch off the end of this just because I made it just as long as my original pattern. And I want this one to be a little bit shorter. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so we just have this like pencil skirt shape situation. Uh, it basically is a pencil skirt with no darts, you know, because you don't need darts. And that's just because in this stretchy fabric, we do not need darts to mold the fabric. We'll just make it smaller and it will stretch to encompass the curves. And then I can grab some fabrics to work with. 
Today, let's start with this uh, like micro dot hollow on a black velvet. This is a four-way stretch. You can see it stretches in both directions. Weirdly enough, it kind of stretches more in the lengthwise than it does widthwise, which is unusual. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and line this buddy up. I'm going to cut out two of these on the fold. Now you could take this kind of pattern and make it in halves so that you can just fold your fabric and lay out one full like piece on it and cut out both sides at once. Um, but I just liked having a quarter pattern like this. Less paper for me. I'm just going to pin that onto my stretchy fabric here. Um, I am like slightly paying attention to grain, <laughs> despite the fact that this is a four-way stretch, so it kind of stretches in every direction. However, you know, I'm used to cutting things on the fold, folded properly on the grain line, so that's what I'm doing here. And I'll just cut this buddy out. Also, because I do have to pay attention a tiny bit for the nap on this, this is a, like, velour velvet, stretch velvet um, at its core, but it's kind of laminated with these holographic dots on it, which gives it this oil slick kind of finish. It's not too sparkly, it just kind of has a sheen to it, which is nice. Let's go ahead and cut another one out, like this. And again, how much fabric here are you going to need for this kind of thing? Uh, I only have a, I think I have a yard and a half of fabric here, because I wanted to have plenty of leftover to use uh, for color blocking other things. But you probably can get away, most people can probably get away with a yard of fabric. It depends on how long you want your skirt to be. It depends on how wide your pattern is. It depends on how wide the fabric is. So, always one of my least favorite questions, how much fabric do I need? It just depends on your pattern and on the fabric you're choosing, because some fabrics are only 44 wide, and you'll need a lot more yardage in that case than you would if you have a fabric that is 60 inches wide. And this here is a wide width fabric, and this particular funky stretch I found at Joann's. But you can see I have plenty left over here to use in color blocking projects in the future. Nice. Let's slightly fold that and get that out of the way. And so I have these two skirt pieces here. It's very simple. Um, we don't even need a separate waistband piece for this. So I cut both of these on the fold. The front and the back are the same. And I'm just going to lay those out, faces facing one another, like so. This is what I mean when you could like, you could cut your paper pattern to look like this, so you only had to cut it out folded once, hopefully again. You kind of get what I mean. Um, but I'm just going to pin the sides of this together. That's right. Because <laughs> we're going to have two seams. One down either side of the skirt here. It's like a pencil skirt, but you get to skip the darts. Now, in this fabric, uh, this velvet is very forgiving, so I don't have to worry about pinning this any special way. I can just pin this with my regular pins and pin perpendicularly like, like, like I normally would. Um, with some of the other fabrics I'll show you, you do have to be more careful with your pinning because the more vinyl-like or PVC-ish fabrics they will show print picks in it, so you don't want to pin those this way. But I have this vinyl effect, or like a weird kind of latex effect, laminated spandex fabric here. This one is like a slightly metallic, it's like very delicately metallic, but mostly just shiny burgundy red spandex here. So you can see like this is like a film of latexy stuff that is fused onto the spandex. You can kind of see at the, um, I want to say margins. No, what is it called? Uh, selvage. Thank you, brain. Keep working. You can do it. I know it's the weekend, but you, you've got it in you. So you can see at the selvage, it's kind of like a film that has been laminated onto this fabric. How long will this last? I don't even know really. But this is the more stickier kind of weird faux leather stuff. So I'm pinning within the margins. I'm pinning like lengthwise along the pattern. I'm trying not to use very many pins and I'm pinning in the like margin of the seam allowance because if I pin this weird plastic stuff, the pin mark will stay, you know? Um, it's like a weird plasticky film that's been laminated onto the fabric. If you pierce that plastic film, it doesn't heal itself in any way like a normal fabric would. Um, so you gotta be careful. But I will cut out again, two of these, one front and one back that are the same. And I am just using my regular fabric scissors to cut all of this out. My fabric scissors are already kind of dull. Um, so I don't really worry about messing them up with weird textiles, but this stuff is kind of plasticky that you're cutting through. So if you had like scissors that you set aside for very nice fabric projects that only ever touch silk or whatever, I wouldn't use those on these. And then I have this last spectrum weird fabric that I will do a different variation of this skirt for. It's kind of like pastel watercolor looking and then yet extremely holographic, this weird spectrum fabric. Now I'm going to take my original pattern here that you saw me reference earlier today and tape on a bit of extra paper and I'm just going to flare the side of this. So I'm just going to flare out the bottom of this from about the knee down. So about 23 is where my knee is. So I want to start this maybe two inches, three inches above where my knee would be. 
and I'm just going to flare this out. It's probably like a 45 degree angle-ish. Again, I'm not measuring it because when have you ever seen me break out the protractor? I should get a protractor. I don't know. But anyway, I'm just going to curve that off, make sure the hem is the same length all the way along. And we can have a slightly flared version of this skirt, which is just as easy to make. And just a little bit of a variation on the style. It's a little bit mermaidy without having to do a ruffle or anything like that. Adds a little bit more movement, much more walkable, this version, uh, because there's a lot more excess below the knee there. But this fabric is just wild stuff. I don't love the pastel, like watercolory weirdness of this, but I do love the holographic effect. And in the dark, you don't really see the pastel colors that you can see here. Actually, in person, you don't really see like the pink. You can kind of see what I mean, like pink, purple, and yellow kind of splotchy of this fabric. Um, it is less notable, noticeable in person. It's definitely less noticeable up close. And this has a very strong holographic effect, especially in light. So that's nice. And this is like, again, tiny little dots that are laminated onto this black spandex. But once again, I'm just going to cut two of these out along the fold like so. Okay, over here on the Burnett B35 machine. That's right, I'm not using the Singer 99K today. And that is because I have this machine, this modern machine here, which can do something called a zigzag stitch, which unfortunately my 99K cannot. So you can use the zigzag stitch for this kind of thing. Um, you need a stitch that will provide stretch basically and zigzag will get that to you. I have something else also available on this machine. Some machines have more stitches than others. See what your machine offers. Um, this one has something called an overlock stitch, which is obviously a faux overlock, a faux like serger kind of stitch. And so that is what I'm using here. Some of you might be saying, Bianca, you own a serger. Why don't you just use that? And as I always say, the serger tension is a mess on that buddy. One day I'm going to buy an industrial serger, which I actually do know how to fix and know how to work with, because I've worked on an industrial serger for a long time, for a couple of years, when I was sewing in a factory setting, um, as a job when I worked for other people. But anyway, um, I digress. But um, here I'm using the overlocker stitch. It's kind of like a you know, a weird stitch that will still allow this to stretch, um, but you can just use a zigzag stitch for this kind of thing. And I'm just using like a quarter inch seam allowance on this. I'm not actually using the full half inch. Um, I'm kind of using like, I don't know, three eighths. It's somewhere in between. I'm just using the edge of the presser foot as a guide basically to run this through here. Again, it's, everything's very stretchy. It, everything's going to be absorbed into the process and it's fine. But this is a, gives me a faux overlocked finish. This does this kind of stitch, uh, because it's taking so many stitches per inch, it's like going, uh, it's doing like a line of straight stitch that's not actually straight. And then an, a lot of extra little weird, like the stitch pattern is strange. That's all I need to say. The stitch pattern is strange and it does eat up thread like nobody's business. So my bobbin like kept running out while I was doing this. This is when I really got frustrated and was like, I'm going to load six bobbins of black thread just so I have them ready. Because like after doing the side seams for one skirt, it was like out of thread already because this weird stitch pattern eats up so much thread, but it is worth it for the stretchiness of it all. And it's nice to have finally used this burnette for something because when I got the 99K and I got the burnette in the same like weekend, I expected this machine to become my new main machine because I didn't know if the 99K would even work. And then of course the 99K became my first love and now I can never go back. So this poor burnette doesn't get a lot of use. So it's lucky that I've been making some knit skirts recently. So it got to get, uh, off the shelf and put to some use. Poor thing. You can, however, get zigzag and special stitch attachments for older machines. So even if you have an older machine that only has straight stitch, you can uh, you possibly find an attachment for that kind of thing. Uh, you've all seen my buttonholer that I can attach onto the Singer 99K. They also have a similar device that does zigzag stitching. So it is possible to find special attachments for the older machines to do fancier stitches. The other thing to note about a four-way stretch spandex like this is it's not going to fray um, the cut edge. You don't have to worry about uh, finishing the seams in any way. Most of these like spandex specialty knits, actually even a lot of jerseys, do not fray in any which way. Uh, most knits don't really fray. They unravel if you like pull on one thread, but like it's, you have to almost intentionally do that. You know, it's hard to get it. <laughs> it's something this tightly knit. It's usually not going to come apart on you. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, but what about that weird latex stuff? Isn't that going to be a pain to sew? Let's find out. Well, since we are sewing on the back side of this fabric, because we have right sides together, it's just regular spandex on both sides. So facing the needle plate is 
the red spandex facing the presser foot is the red spandex backing. So there's no problem feeding this through the machine at this point. It won't be sticky or weird or anything. So this is just fine uh, putting this shiny faux patent leather kind of weird latexy material through the machine. It handles it no problem. And once our side seams for our skirts are done, we can go ahead and start working on the waistband. So I'm going to grab this first spectrum skirt here and I'm going to mark the halfway point, aka the center front and center back here on these. So I'm just folding this so the seams are together and I'm marking the front and back here. Hopefully again, you can see what I'm doing. I'll turn that right side out like so. And I'm not pressing my seam allowance open on this just because the faux overlock stitch I'm using um, doesn't allow for that kind of thing. It's like a thick faux overlock stitch. So I have a one inch wide waistband non-fold over elastic here that I'm going to cut to size. I cut this to 28 inches, which again is my waist minus two inches. You can go tighter if you want tighter. You can make it a little bit looser if you want it to be not like constrictive in any way. This isn't too tight on me at all. This is pretty stretchy elastic. I'm just taking that over to the machine and overlapping it a tiny bit and stitching it back and forth a few times with that same stretchy stitch. So now I have a waistband that's all sewn together. So I'm going to take the part where it was overlapped and that's now going to become my center back and that will delineate the center back for me. So I'm pinning that onto my center back here. I will go ahead and fold this elastic into fourths like this so that I have like the same kind of markings as I do in the skirt. I'm going to take the seam allowance, point it towards the back that I've now decided, you know, the back is where I pinned that overlap. Again, on the side here, pin that towards the back. And then uh, the skirt is going to be a little bit bigger than my um, waistband here, just because the waistband is a little bit smaller because of that overlap that I did to close the waistband. But again, it's all stretchy. It's fine. As long as you're within a couple of inches, nothing should go to awry. I'm going to take that over the machine and I'm going to stitch this down again, using the presser foot as a guide. So it's about a quarter of an inch in, but I'm still using that faux overlock stitch. You could still use the zigzag stitch. I'm just holding this in place. I only have it pinned in those four areas. I'm once I have the needle down and in here, you can see I'm holding this at tension. So I'm holding the skirt behind the presser foot and I'm holding it in front and I'm stretching the fabric so that it matches the length of the elastic. Because again, the fabric is a little bit longer than the elastic. So I'm stretching the elastic out to match the fabric. Hopefully this makes sense. Just look at what I'm doing. You know, now, funny enough, I did this for, I don't know, two years. <laughs> I used to put elastic wave spans on mermaid tails. That was my job for a while. So this, the first time I did it was a little bit, um, triggering isn't the right word because that's a very serious term, but it was a bit flashbacky for me in a bad way because I used to just sew waistbands on to spandex mermaid tails all day. <laughs> and now I don't really like mermaids anymore. It's been ruined for me, sadly, guys. I'm sorry, but I'm just doing that same thing all the way around just overlapping when I get back to the beginning. But that's why I, when I say like I worked in a factory setting with swimwear knits for like years, and yet I don't know how to sew with knits. That's what I mean. It's because mostly I was just sewing side seams and waistbands like this. I wasn't doing anything fancy with knits, just very simple stuff. Now you're going to fold the waistband over and you're going to have your camera die on you right in an opportune moment. Dang it. So you can either do this from the outside or the inside, but you're basically folding the elastic under inside now so that everything is in case you don't have to look at that elastic like so. So I've just folded that in on itself and I'm just going to go around and basically sew the same way. So I'm holding it in front of and in the back of the machine, just stretching it a tiny bit as I go around just to make sure everything lays smoothly and nicely. This is where you would use like a cover stitch machine. If you had one access to one, I have a couple of friends who still work in a uh, knitwear factory settings. So they probably have access to better machinery than I do for these kinds of things. But one day, uh, if I have a big sewing room or a bigger sewing room, I will probably invest in a, at least industrial serger, just because I do serge quite a lot, just because I, it's my favorite way to finish raw edges. And the sad little brother surgery that I have, although it was the best price, which was free because it was my mom's, <laughs> um, is not really up to the task of a lot of work. Now I'm here, I'm doing the same thing, putting that uh, waistband into the latex kind of version. It does require a little bit more convincing to put it through here. The feed dogs will grab the sticky side or like the shiny side of this, not too bad. Um, so this isn't too terrible doing this, but once I fold it over to finish the waistband, things will get a little bit sticky. I probably should have put some um, tape on the underside of this presser foot at least. And you can also get special presser feet for working with latex ish fabrics, PVC fabrics. Um, I'm sure that it's really easy to get those because a lot of people do bag making and things like that now, but you can see, I'm just helping this through the machine a little bit more than 
I probably should, you know. But all's well that ends well, you know. So my elastic is now on. I can go ahead, switch to red thread because I had still the black thread in there. But since this stitching will show on the outside, I thought, oh, let's switch over to black to uh, red thread. But then I forget to switch the red bobbin, so. <sighs> useless. Anyway, I'm going to go ahead and turn this, fold that like so, you can see, boop, like that to finish off this waistband, and go around again. And unfortunately, because I'm doing this from the inside, which I find is easier, especially because I can, again, use the presser foot as a guide, um, that means that my black bobbin thread is ending up on the outside. Like a fool. But that's alright. No one's going to be studying my waistband that closely. And honestly, these super stretchy skirts, I plan on wearing them, or these super shiny uh, like latex look skirts, I plan on wearing them with jackets, like blazers most of the time, um, because they do feel a little bit like quote unquote sexy for me otherwise. Um, it's just not something I lean into very often, especially if I'm like actually, like here on set and like for fashion purposes, no problem. But like if I were to like wear this I would feel less comfortable like walking to my car by myself or something like that because in Denver you will get catcalled and you never know if people are just yelling at you to like, I don't know, show social dominance or if they actually want to attack you. So, you know, the pleasures of being a woman and wearing what you want to without quote unquote asking for it. Um, but let's not get, you know, talk about sad things. Anyway, um, because I pressed the seam allowance or I put the seam allowance towards the back on the waistband, I'm gonna do the same here down at the hem. This is that first oil slick dot one. I'm just gonna fold this up about five eighths of an inch. I'm gonna use that same overlock stitch, that's right, again, and go around the edge of this and stitch it down. Again, you could use zigzag. The better your thread matches your project and the sparklier and weirder the fabric is, the less you will see the stitches. So that's promising. So here, a black thread on this, you really don't see it at all. It disappears right into this weird sparkliness. You can press this fabric, by the way. Um, I have the iron pretty medium here because I don't want to melt anything, of course. You could always use a press cloth if you're worried about melting into the funny finish. But I'm just going to run that through the machine, again using the presser foot as my guide here, and using that funny overlocker stitch. Same for this latex. You can see I'm doing this from the outside. Again, you could do that from the outside or the inside. It's really not going to make a giant difference. But this here, I'm just doing it this way because I can't really pin this fabric, once again, uh, for the hem here because it has, you know, that the latex coating, I can't put pins in it without creating holes in it. I could pin, like you can see I have one pin here. I have like one, like probably six pins total around the hem of this um, because those holes will be like taken over by the holes of the stitching itself. Um, but you really can't pin this much. So I'm having to kind of finagle it in here to get the hem going. So I'm just kind of pinching it with my hands more than anything. Um, and trying not to pin it much because I don't want permanent holes in this red latex skirt. I did end up making a few more of these, so here is a metallic blue purple kind of faux leathery stuff that I found at Joann's in their cosplay section, and I am very excited to wear all these skirts in various lookbooks and outfits out and about in the future. I hope this was helpful for any of you thinking about giving these stretch skirts a try. It's kind of hard to say that stretch skirts. And thank you as always for watching today. I'll be back here with more vintage fashion sewing, crafting, and costuming real soon, so I'll see you then. Bye!